Ford's Coyote engine is a great platform for any enthusiast. It's got great airflow potential from the factory and you can unlock even more potential with some basic modifications. Today, I'm with Greg Rentis at Triple C Motorsports and we're working on this 2000 horsepower Coyote engine build. We're doing a cam swap and we're upgrading from the current build that's in there Greg, why don't you run us down some of the finer points of what's going in there and why we're upgrading. Yeah, so what we did was we took a Gen 1 block, we had the Darton sleeves installed in there. The factory plasma arc transferred uh, liners that are factoring these blocks are very, very weak and prone. And that's what we're pretty much limited on this block right now. On top of it, we put a set of GT350 cylinder heads. Comp has graciously uh, set up a set of custom cams on there. So we can take advantage of uh, some high RPM power. How did you pair that camshaft with these cylinder heads to get the most out of this motor? Well, Comp Cams did quite a bit of uh, research on it. They uh, designed the duration and lift to achieve higher RPM power, more power, uh, to fit the needs of these GT350 heads. They uh, took the variable valve timing, we're gonna be deleting that. Uh, they uh, increased the spring rate on the valve springs. Uh, and of course, the, the new camshafts with that, uh, we should be good to go. I know we gotta get baseline dyno numbers from this thing, but I can't wait to see this thing in action. Um, you ready to go? Let's do it. All right, man. All right, cool. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. That's better. make enough power? It's never enough, man. <laughs> so where does this thing make peak horsepower? Right now it's making its peak power at about 7,000 RPM. Uh, we're hoping with the new cylinder heads and the custom cams that were built for it, we're hoping to push this thing to about 8,000, maybe a little bit more. This is on a lower boost. Uh, this isn't the full out that we do on this thing. Yeah. But uh, this is on about 11 or 12 pounds right now. We've wow, cranked man. it up as much as about 17 and made about 1,000 horsepower at the limits of this stock block, basically. Right. Four overhead cams, it allows you to wrap this thing out a little bit farther than some other engines. Yeah, that's the benefit of the dual variable valve timing. It just makes a lot of power on the top end. You'll see that they just don't make as much torque like a, like an LT motor, um, but uh, they'll make a lot more horsepower. So Greg, Coyote engine has two camshafts per head, four valves per cylinder, right? Unlocking the, the horsepower potential on this thing has a lot to do with the camshafts. Can you tell us how Comp came up with the grind to work specifically with your engine setup? Uh, first, we had to delete the variable valve timing. Uh, when you get to a certain point, pretty much at this level, uh, the variable valve timing just doesn't work very well because uh, you have to increase the spring rates, uh, which Comp uh, has done for us as well. Uh, and the variable valve timing just doesn't want to work against those spring rates very well. So what they did was they've uh, designed us some great camshafts and we also got uh, phasered uh, deletes uh, to put on there as well that are adjustable. Uh, so we can dial in our camshaft angles any which way we want. Right. And so all of that equates to the valve staying open longer, more air flowing, thus creating more power, right? Exactly. It seems as though the twin turbo setup you have on your build kind of defines things around here. Um, tell me how the new cams interface with that. What uh, Comp generally does is they, they want to try to increase the duration on the exhaust as much as possible. It helps the turbo spool uh, and with an increase on the intake side to actually get the air in and out like that, it's just going to help uh, flow more air and potentially give us more power. With wild lobe separation angle, I mean, those valves are going to stay open for a lot longer than factory. Exactly. And uh, equate to about 2,000 horsepower? That's what we're hoping for. All right. Now the camshaft we're using requires a valve spring and retainer upgrade, which we already have in the engine. And that's because of the power we're looking to make and because of the lift and duration. The comp actually makes a set of camshafts that are designed to work with the factory valve train. But with a max effort build like the one behind me, we wanted something that was gonna handle the lift and duration that a factory valve spring just couldn't.
So we're deleting variable valve timing with this setup from comp cams, and we're using adjustable cam gears to dial in the mechanical timing. Uh, in doing so, we're adding a little bit of time to the install, but if you take your time and do it right the first time, it's good to go. So we also went ahead and got rid of the old torque to yield bolts that come from the factory and replaced it with new hardware. And uh, it's also important to mention to use plenty of assembly lube when you're putting everything together. All right, we're leaving all the bolts loose for right now until we get all the, uh, the chains on and we can phase the cams and get them uh, the center line dialed in. So now that we got the cams in, we're gonna let Greg and the guys button everything up, put the new turbos on, swap the engine. We're gonna come back in a few days and check this thing out on the dyno. So Greg, we are back, man. We got the Mustang on the rollers. Uh, looks like you have everything buttoned up nice and neat. The turbos are tucked nicely into their new homes. Tell me about the cam swap and what you expect as far as feel. Probably we're gonna see a, a good increase in the mid-range and upper RPM power. We might see a little bit of a loss down low because, well, we got uh, no variable valve timing to kind of adjust it to down low. Uh, and then of course we got the bigger turbos. What were we boosting before and, and are we gonna stay in that same range now? Yeah, so before we were doing about 12 pounds, we're gonna stick right at about that 12 pounds and kind of just give an apples to apples comparison from the old motor and old turbos to the new motor new turbos in the camshaft. Let's let her eat. Let's do it. All right. Greg, that was incredible, man. That was awesome. What we had before was about 795 on 12 pounds on the old boost, uh, or the old motor and the old turbos. Uh, now we're up to 918 uh, horsepower at the wheels. Uh, so we've picked up about 123 horsepower. The torque we actually picked up as well too, went from 620 to uh, almost 690 there. So we picked up almost 70 foot pounds of torque at the wheels. You know, that was comparing apples to apples, but uh, you've also cranked it up a little bit. and had a little bit of fun with this thing. Yeah. And you, uh, can you show us that? Yes, we, we cranked it up to about a little over 22 pounds and uh, got a pretty good solid number there. We got about 1400 horsepower and about a thousand foot pounds of torque at the wheels. So as you can see, we also gained about 500 RPM, five to 600 RPM there, um, a little bit higher uh, RPM power as well. When before, we were pretty much done at about 7,000 RPM and now we're about 76, 7,700 on some of these pulls. Man, that's awesome. You're all spooling almost to 8,000 RPM. Exactly. That's amazing, man. And, and, and you were at 22 and then you plan on taking it to? Probably 30 will be our max. That's awesome, yeah, man. Yeah. That's awesome. We picked up almost 130 horsepower in the range that you want. There's still some fine tuning to be done. And I know that that'll be done uh, as you get those break in miles. Um, but man, what an incredible uh, you know power gain for a cam swap, head swap, and variable valve timing delete. And slightly larger turbos. But uh, man, what, what, so what's next for the project? We're gonna break it in, then we gotta get it out there on the track, have some fun with it. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much for letting us be a part of your project. Uh, for you guys at home, if you wanna check out more on this project, check out fordnext.com for all the updates on this one and all your latest Ford news.